Welcome to Solar Europe's channel, where we bring you expert advice, essential solar tips to help you harness the power of the sun. Let's power up together. Are you wondering if 2025 is finally ready to go solar? With rising energy costs, South Africans are asking this question more than ever. But is it worth the investment? What about reliability, maintenance, and long-term savings? We've brought together the biggest names in the industry to give you the answers you need. If you're on the fence about going solar, stick around. These insights could save you thousands and change the way you power your life. Hi, I'm Shanawa Suleiman from Dynas a leading ESS manufacturer. With South Africans facing the rising electricity costs and constant load shedding, many are considering solar as an alternative solution. Yes, definitely. Solar systems can handle power outages and load sheddings if effectively, in which case, uh, during the day, with your solar generation, your excess power is stored in your battery, and at night, you can use the power stored in your battery to power up your home to ensure you have power constantly. Solar systems require very little maintenance. Your solar panels should be cleaned occasionally. The Dynas batteries require very minimal upkeep. Your inverter should be checked yearly, thus ensuring very low maintenance, reliability, and a hassle-free system. Yes, solar is a good investment given our, our rising cost of electricity as well as our constant power outages. Solar will provide you with the power that you need to be powered on constantly. Plus, Dynas is a premium brand which is also affordable. Good morning, I'm Andy Daniels with Lux Power & Hynar, South Africa. And today we're going to be discussing a few points um, around the solar industry. Government incentives. Uh, are there government incentives in place to support uh, the solar industry as well as rebates? We all know that the, uh, there was a standard rebate that was uh, put in place for the 2024-25 20, tax year and I think it comes to the end uh, now in February 2025 and that was it favoured mainly the commercial sector um, where the full value of your solar installation uh, could be uh, you could you could claim that as a tax rebate uh, on your profits uh, in the 2024-2025 tax year and then uh, I'm not sure if the uh, for the residential market or for the private individual there was the uh, rebate uh, which was just this, the value of your solar panels only the sol solar panel component of your installation the lifespan of a typical solar installation can be anything from uh, 10 to 15 years but it is strictly 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 uh, dependent on uh, the quality of components that you put in so you as an end user have to make sure that you make a proper selection a good selection of good components and that starts from your uh, solar panels to the inverter to the batteries to the wiring uh, and the switch gear that you use and the final component is the installer always use an accredited installer a certified electrician uh, and if you use if you get those five things right uh, there's no reason why your solar system cannot outlive its rated warranty so you must remember that most solar panels come with a 15 year warranty um, a lot of the batteries that are out there now are giving you a limited cycles like maybe 6,000 or 10,000 cycles or uh, um, that uh, time in years which is possibly 10 years in the warranty as our inverters a lot of the top brands are now extending the life of the inverter the warranty life of the inverter to 10 years 
One of the things that we've got to be uh, mindful of is the safe and um, responsible disposal of waste. Um, so in the solar industry you have the solar panels um, which will have obviously the metal for the aluminium frame, the tempered glass and then the, uh, the, 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 uh, the actual solar panel cell itself. Um, that is a, it's a um, specific type of disposal so there are waste companies around the country that will particularly handle that. Um, inverters are quite easy, easily disposed of. Uh, you can take um, any damaged or broken or out of warranty or maybe you know out of currency uh, inverters, you can take that to any e-waste recycling uh, facility and as a matter of fact they will pay you for your PCBs. Batteries on the other hand uh, require a much stricter uh, handling, uh, especially the, the gel types um, uh, as well as the lithium types. Now remember that lithium packs, whether it's a soft gel pack or the, uh, the prismatic cell, um, they are uh, highly flammable if they are if they are damaged in any way, whether where they are pierced and the electrolyte gets to come out. So those have to be uh, handled by e-waste companies specifically. The life cycle of the solar industry in South Africa um, it had an, an unnatural growth. Uh, typically, uh, in any market, you will have the early innovators, then the early adopters, then mass adoption then it'll kind of plateau off before it tapers off. Um, but South Africa had a very unusual um, growth in the market, or growth spurt, I should say, which was driven largely by load shedding. Now, as we all know, load shedding has been, um, it's been dormant, or it's been non-existent for uh, going on 10 months now, uh, which is a good thing for South Africans, but not a very good thing for um, the boomers in the solar industry. So we've seen a lot of, uh, sort of guys come into the market, you know, the late adopters come in uh, and leave, cause a lot of damage and leave. But um, the, the industry itself is still growing and our next growth driver is going to be the price of electricity as it increases. It's going to stimulate uh, the responsible public to have a look at what the cost of electricity is versus what the cost of putting in a solar system is. Hi, Leon from Melange Electrical. Professional electricians qualified to do the necessary COCs installation of all electrical work and solar installations. All right, so the upfront cost of a normal house, average three bedroom, will be around about to get 95% without the generator to get off grid. You're looking at around about 220,000 Rand. That's depending on your consumption. So to break even depends on your cost. So can between three to seven years, all depends on your initial installation and what your average consumption was beforehand. And if you balance the two, you will see the difference in your return on investment. So can a system um, use a, a, do a startup on a high energy su supply like an aircon or a geyser? Yes, the answer is short answer is yes, but depends on what size installation you got. So if you've got a five kilowatt inverter and you're looking at the geyser three kilowatt, so the difference there is say two kilowatt left. So if the geyser is on, you can't use a kettle and stuff like that. But if you've got an aircon and it's the energy efficient one, like the inverter type, yes, you can run it with the geyser also. If it's the older type the um, aircons or the, the little bit cheaper ones, your startup current is quite high. Then you can't run it with the geyser. But if you run it separately, yes, you can do it. If you go to a higher inverter, obviously, then you do the calculation. You're looking at the cal kilowatts and the startup kilowatts, then you can run 90% of them and you won't have a problem with um, the whole installation. So it all depends on your kilowatt and the efficiency of your equipment, like your geyser, what type of geyser uh, element you got in, inverter type, all that make quite a big difference. So with installing solar, can you reduce your electrical bill and how much can you reduce it? Well, with a new price increase that we seeing being on, on, on um, ESCOM's list, 
you will be quite fast at your payback and you can reduce your bill at least 50% or more. Also, it goes back to the amount of panels you install on your roof. You can save much more, obviously, and up to 100%. Hello everyone, my name is Rajan Suben and I am the Technical Manager for Solax in South Africa. Hello everyone, my name is Prosper Mplana, I'm a Service Engineer for Solax South Africa. I think the reliability of a solar system depends upon a number of factors, which include um, solar irradiance, system design and energy demands. If a system is properly de designed, then the reliability is not affected. Such as for a system, they have 100% uh, oversizing of PV, so a good design can overcome reliability issues. All right, so off-grid system means you are able to operate the system without the grid. For example, the installation here at Solar Europe operates permanently off-grid. So with a combination of batteries and right panel sizing, they are able to cater for the load 24 hours a day. So a grid tied inverter, on the other hand, only works when there is a grid or a generator. So you need a permanent source of supply. A hybrid inverter is an inverter that has batteries incorporated and it can work whenever there is a sun or there is no sun or whether there is grid or no grid. So in my view, we've reached almost a turning point here in South Africa, and I see three big changes going on. So what I see is there's going to be a lot more growth in the CNI space, which is uh, commercial and industrial, and the utility space. So many manufacturers will come up with better and better products for that market. I also see a consolidation between manufacturers, where the same manufacturer will produce inverters, batteries, and their own apps, and we can see that happening already. So the third element I see is a bit more professionalism in the industry, where installers will get more and more skill, especially attending training courses like what we offer here at Solar Europe free of charge. And there will be a lot more products and education from manufacturers through their own website. And I think distributors, manufacturers and installers alike will all going to evolve into more professional status going forward. Got more questions? Drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more expert solar advice. Thank you for watching. We hope the video answered your questions about going solar in 2025 and making the right decision.